Hi. Afternoon. Check. I think you should be able to hear me. Okay. So now is week eleven. Yeah, we still left another two topic for this module. I will cover this week. I will cover the dynamic programming, and probably maybe today if I finish it, then Wednesday I will start the last one, the matching problem. Yeah. These two, I would say, is quite a uh, interesting problem, or interesting matter to solve the problem. Then, yeah, we will, it's related a little bit. It is there. We are using the backtracking technique. You will see that there are some backtracking idea will be applied in the dynamic programming problem. Also, the matching problem. You also can see they are using. You can use some um, traversal problem to search the best match. The nut. Yeah, the 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 matching to solve the matching problem in maybe this Wednesday or next Monday. Hopefully I can complete the all these things by next Monday or Wednesday. Then I will probably this week I will release the last assignment. Maybe in Wednesday I will release the last assignment. In the last assignment, I think I will just give you two questions for the last assignment. Yeah, then last week already released the assignment five. Assignment five, the deadline will be next when next Thursday. Will be next Thursday. So this week I will release the last assignment, which I think I am just put two question for you. One, yeah, is something about the permutation or backtracking, and then the other one probably is about the matching problem. Then you have. Two weeks time to to work on it then this week there's no tutorial but the lab is still carry on the lab is every week we have the the lab then the the, the last tutorial tutorial six i will release soon maybe tonight I, I should be able to release it and then the one will be in will be conduct in and next week the tutorial the last tutorial but for some student because next week next friday next friday is the public holiday which is the good friday then those student affected group will be their your tutorial your tutorial and lab section will be conducted in week 13 in week 13 instead of week 12 because week 12 friday is the good friday so i think that is the the schedule so lab we still this week will be the lab 7 next week will be the lab 8 so and this approach is there a way to reduce the number there's a question about the for the breakfast search with the large number of loop in the iterative approach is there a way to reduce the number of iterative approach it can be one of a most intuitive way is through instead of using the adjacency metric if you use the adjacency list it can help you to improve because you don't need to search the keep searching the repeatedly search the the all the nodes you can just read the link list directly that is also another thing i would like to talk about it the tutor uh, the assignment five assignment five you will find that i think quite enough I think the there are two questions are okay. There's one question about the the population stuff. Yeah, I I I would like to let you know is like you got two test case is relatively small. Small in the sense is I only give you ten city to fifty city. That I think most of the students have no issue with that too. Then when you go to the third one and fourth one one of them i i try to give you is 80000 80000 city when you have 80000 city then you will find that of course adjacency metric definitely is out of your consideration you expect that if you really go and build 
80,000 by 80,000 metric to build out the graph, you definitely cannot. Mm, mm, immediately, you are out of memory. Memory, I maximum, I, I already trying to maximize it. They only allow up to 1 GB only. So you definitely cannot do that. And the time limit I put, I think the maximum I'm trying to, hum I, I, I also give you maximum, but no use one. I give you 10 seconds or 20 seconds, you still face a problem when you have such a large uh, data set. Yeah, that is something you, 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 I, 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 I give you a challenge to think about it. But well, if most of the student cannot do it, uh, but, but there are someone do it, did, did, can yeah, already solve it, just let you know. And yeah, you, you, you just try. For, 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 for what I see is like that is like just let you know the, the challenge of the kind of a real world problem that, that is not always a simple five data, five, five, the end is only five or 10 or 20. Yeah, it can be 80,000. Yeah, how are you going to fix the problem? That is just let you know how people test you in the future. So, well, you try. If really most of the students cannot do it, I will moderate the, re the, 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 the assignment. So the purpose is just let you know that the data can be that big in the future. Yeah. So actually it's not just blindly implement all the code. Yeah, you have to think about it, how to optimize it a little bit. Then, can I use other function? Of course, uh, you will find that you, I, 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 I didn't stop you not to use declare by your own data structure, declare by your own function. It is okay for your own use. As long as you don't, I think this time you're probably not able to modify my, my template. I already freeze it. So, so, so you, you, you can declare for your own use. You can write separate function. That's not an issue. Separate function for your own use. Again, I have to emphasize for your own use. That means you use it in your own function only. Don't interfere my, 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 my stuff. That is okay. You, you write everything in one function or you write two function is still for your own use. That, that is not a problem. You declare a, a, a structure for your own use, that is also fine. It's still within your, 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 the, the scope for your, for, for, for your, for your part. Then, then that is okay. But you don't try to create some function to, to conflict with my one, then, then making, uh, but of course, if you're doing that, you, 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 your, your, your program wouldn't work. Yeah. So that is the things, yeah. Just try to 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 your best to do it. You need to have some trick. You may need to 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 do something that is not anyhow. You can just blindly implement the that first search can can easy resolve. But the problem I can tell you, you notice that I tell you is that it's a tree. When I say it's a tree, that means there's no cycle in the graph. Is a yeah and but the when I say it is a tree, but I also not means that it's a binary tree. Yeah, the one you learn in the first half is just a binary tree. But such a tree, such a network is a tree. But the tree can be one nodes with three child or four child or more. It can be, yeah, it can be. It's still a tree. There's no cycle. Yeah, and also a, a, another thing you may notice or you may you may have learned it in the discrete mathematics that the the num actually I already told you in the question also the number of h is the number of vertex minus one if it is a tree you can try to draw n tree and play with it you will find that that is always the case so that is some uh, and the path is unique from A to B, any two city, U and V, any two city, the they all only because there's no cycle, so not surprising that there's only one unique path. And you can assume that I I, I wouldn't I, I don't I, I also don't need to give you any any uh invalid input. Valid input already not easy to do already. So you can assume that the input I give you is always valid. Since I already freeze the, 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 the main function, you cannot modify my main function. So of course the input must be valid. If I give you any invalid one, it's not your fault. It's the main function not even can, 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 can run it properly. 
then then of course you can't do anything at your end so so definitely the input is valid i that's mean that you you receive the number of city the num the, the population is already in sequence is correct then the the path the route the connectivity is correct everything is correct and what else yeah the city the quarry the number of quarry followed by the the number of quarry and the number and the quarries is match one there's no invalid or, or i give a negative number or this kind of thing yeah not necessary yes at most including two at most two means at yeah including two has a population of oh. e should two and three is it i remember I, is it does it include the 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 the, the one that why i need to double check i can't remember the 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 one you 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 said you yeah okay so that is the 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 information i would like to share with you to today okay i should start the 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 lecture now the dynamic programming in the last week i have mentioned that okay this dynamic programming in actually is invent i can say invent that by richard annas bellman in 1953 it's quite a old uh, uh, matter actually they use it in the control theory yeah. the person actually you find that is is people is from the is an, an engineer in, yeah doing the control theory and this is a kind of a optimization dynamic programming not really a, a coding uh. so that's what i would like to emphasize a lot of people intuitive thinking po however programming is a is a programming language this is not a programming language it's a kind of a optimization method then you can think that it's more like a tabular method to filling the table later you will find that yeah i'm trying to fill out the table to to solve the problem and it's a kind yeah there are a lot of this kind of a programming in optimization like linear programming integer programming convex programming survey definite programming and so on and so forth for those who are from spms maybe there are some courses teaching you one of them yeah so he well apply in not only in computer science system control to economy they are using it yeah mm. so what is the idea of the dynamic programming what is the dynamic programming it's very similar to divide and conquer strategy um, it's trying to basically it's trying to breaking the big problem into divide and conquer is also divide the big problem big po to the small sub problem and each sub problem have a similar uh is similar but the problem side is is smaller and then you can solve them recursively or you're trying to solve each of them separately and then after that you merge the result and and then solve the bigger problem but what is the difference between dynamic programming and divide and conquer one of the key is and uh, dynamic programming problem those problem is suitable to use the dynamic programming their sub problem are not independent that's when you are repeatedly you will find that there, there's a that there's some sub problem you need to yeah it's re re reoccur reoccur when you divide the sub problem you may see that certain sub problem are reoccur they are overlapping with other sub problem when you divide the po divide the big problem to smaller sub problem certain sub problem you need to solve it few times yeah then that will start people start thinking that since it's solved why not i solve it once and remember the result so that subsequently if i encounter such a sub problem again in other sub problem in when when i divide others Po big problem into smaller sub problem I, if i re-encounter the same sub problem which i have solved earlier then i can check the table that will be accelerate my 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 computational time so so that is what 
the dynamic programming coming in. And, and that and usually this dynamic programming problem maybe they are mult, it can have multiple optimum solution. That means you look for a certain solution and later you will find that the, the matching problem also we we are not real sometimes we are checking the number of solution or we are looking for the number only the number of the result or something like that we may not need but but it may not be particular we we are not refer to particular path particular solution yeah it can be multiple there are a few possible case few, few possible permutation give you the same optimum solution yeah so usually dynamic programming may just depend your implementation of course but usually we just need it to return one of them that is good enough already we just want one of the solution on it so one of the simple example you you have learned before is the Fibonacci series yeah Fibonacci series if you try I think last week I also have mentioned for example you try n equal to 4 you can find that when n equal to 4 you this problem n equal to 4 this big problem I can divide into I need to solve this problem I need to find n equal to 3 and n equal to 2 and then from if I if I want to solve the problem when n equal to 3 I need to solve the problem the the same sub the sub problem of n equal to 2 and n equal to 1 because I only know n equal to 1 and n equal to 2 which is equal to 1 then and then I sum it up but very soon you will realize if you look at this diagram you this graph you 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 notice that actually n equal to 2 you need to solve it two times if you don't do anything you just blindly implement the Fibonacci series using the recursive function recursive approach then you find that n equal to 2 you need to solve it two times when you go to bigger problem n equal to 5 n equal to 6 n equal to 7 and so on and so forth you find that n equal to 3 n equal to 4 you need to solve it a few times here and there so it is not really a good idea because that will this is as also explain why such a problem look like very simple but the computer computational times is so expensive so to people will start thinking that to store the result the, the solution the optimum solution of the uh, to the sub problem into a table um you can say it's a memory or cache yeah depend your application so but it's trying to in short it's trying to store the the solution and then when when you reoccur re, re encounter the same pop same sub problem hey you find that the table have the answer you don't have to recursively go through the 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 recalculate the the result that can help you to improve the performance that kind of a process is known as a memorization memorization yeah is okay later i will i have the short, short notes is it's something like memorize the the answer but they're trying to distinguish it yeah it's slightly it's, it's it's trying to build a table and then use that table and then when you call the function you check the table to help you to accelerate the result yeah then that will become instead of doing this way that's mean this this kind of approach is instead of calculate all of them i just need to count the one n equal to one one times n equal to two one times n equal to three one times then n equal to four if i want to know it i just need to check the table for n equal to three n equal to two i want to know n equal to one to get the n equal to three then i also need to count once then i can solve the problem for n equal to four so that will reduce our computational times significantly especially when the problem size increase and in other words you can improve normally the the this such an algorithm can help you to improve the complexity from exponential to power to n to polynomial to n or n power n square or yeah or n cube but no which is this is still much better than two power to n
the exponential class, complexity class. Yeah. So there are two kind of a. Uh, okay, maybe I need to. So this is not my typo. Ah, uh, is really in the. It 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 is really there's a there's a in in computer science in computer science, someone, this person, donor is try in nineteen sixty he 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 give this he named this term called memorization, is derived from some Latin word, yeah. Is to be remembered, so he distinguished the technique of. Is a is trying to distinguish. This is a, as a caching the function result, from more general is like memor memorization. Memorization is like memorize. Is like caching. Yeah, it's just caching. It just store the result. But you are not only just store the result. You also trying to have a function to use those result. And and remember them, and then and then you use them to solve the problem. So it's a little bit different, ah, uh. yeah. So generally speaking, dynamic programming approach there are two way. One is the top down approach. The other one is bottom up. Just like earlier Fibonacci series, I can use the top down approach. That means I want to solve the problem. Let's say n equal to ten. To solve n equal to ten, I need to Top down approach is from n equal to ten. I need to solve n equal to nine and n equal to eight. So I need to solve these two sub problem first. So to solve these two sub problem, of course, I need to solve n equal to seven and six. Okay, eight already repeated here. So seven and six. I need to know seven and six. To know n equal to seven and six, I need to know the ans uh the the sub problem for n equal to uh four. And go to five, six, five and six, and so on and so forth. So that is kind of a top down approach. Bottom up approach is the other way around. That means you try, I yeah, you n equal to ten. Then I just simply start from n equal to one, two, three, four, five. I trying to solve n equal to one, n equal to two, n equal to three, n equal to four, to n equal to ten. When I reach n equal to ten, I solve the problem. That is bottom up, yeah, approach. So you figure out the order, then you you you. You trying to slowly stack up the small sub problem and build up the solution for the larger one. For top now approach is you try to, uh, recursively solve the sub problem and then you memorize the solution for each sub problem. If you re encounter the same sub problem, you re encounter the same sub problem. You don't have to recalculate it. You can just simply check the table and. Array whatever in whatever form data structure form to store the data. Uh, store the result, the solution. You just simply reuse it. So that is the key. They they can accelerate. So if your problem, their sub problem is not overlap, is not in uh is is uh totally independent. Then dynamic programming cannot help you. Yeah, you you will find that. Is very suitable is for using the dynamic approach is when the you find that the sub problem are repeatedly occur in when you are divide the problem to smaller sub problem and trying to solve them, yeah. So that is one of the yeah the one I mentioned using the to calculate the Fibonacci series you can use the top down approach. Top down approach is like this one. This is a recursive function. And then you start from n every iter. You you still same thing. You still trying to to do the n minus one and n minus two, and then trying to sum it up. But every time you will check whether this sub problem have been solved earlier or not. If this sub problem has been solved earlier in the earliest uh, the thing I have a uh, I maybe every time I can pass. Either I pass this array, this table, or I have a global array on top of it. Then every every recursive call you check first. Earlier, early conventional one you don't check ah. Conventional you don't have this two if statement. You don't check. Then you you will cost you a lot of computation time. Yeah, but this one if you check, you may return earlier. You don't need to go all the way to n equal to two or n equal to one. You can stop earlier, 
and return the result and then and then proceed yeah the summation the sum and then you can return the value so your recursive uh will end earlier then that will reduce the computational time to from this one i have mentioned more precisely the complexity if without the dynamic programming approach that's when you use the conventional uh, recursive function, recursive approach. Your complexity is uh, 1 plus square root 5 over 2 power to n. Yeah, but this one you will reduce to n. Improve to linear. From exponential function to linear. Definitely is significant. Another way is using bottom-up approach. That's why I, I, I don't care how big your n it is. I start from n equal to uh zero and one is known already that's when i start from two let's say in initially the value is zero and one that's when the next number is one then one plus one is two so i slowly build up the the bigger problem so it's it's just need to run a for loop slowly solve each small problem and slowly build up from n equal to two three four five six then you found the answer depend your n uh, of course and this one also in linear time. Not surprising. You can see that it's in you can run in linear time. Yeah, you only have one for loop. Yeah, so not only Fibonacci is just a, a simple example. They are it, it can be using the dynamic programming can solve a lot of uh problem in the string algorithm to string problem uh to graph problem. I think this will cover in the next level, so I, I will not go to, into too much details. And then the change metric multiplication. If you know how the metric multiplication work, you should realize that, yeah, there are a lot of uh, multiplication are repeatedly. You need to repeatedly do it. So since it is so, why not I trying to have a table to remember them? Then that can help us to improve the times, the time complexity of metric multiplication. Other classic problem today we will discuss is the road cutting and zero one net set problem. These are two very classic problem, and then other subset sum I think I will put in the uh, either lab or or, or or assignment. So this one I I would not I just. Today I just today and Wednesday I just talk about these two classic problem. So rope cutting is just like you have a a piece of rope. Then then I provide you the a table that's showing the the price. If it's one cm, then it's one dollar. Then if it's two cm, it's five dollar. If it's three cm, it's eight dollar. If four cm, it's nine dollar, and so on and so forth. Then now you have a a a piece of a a a, a rope. Then you you can XCM, XCM, yeah. Then you need to maximize your revenue. Where is my? Okay, yeah. I, I my 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 objective is I want to find an optimum solution such that I can maximize my revenue by cutting the road in different length. Of course, the sum must be still remain. You only have XCM. That's mean which mean that the first possible solution is I don't do anything. Just the whole piece, just X cm. I just sell it accordingly. If my X is nine cm, then I can earn twenty four dollar. Then, then there of course there's a possible that I cut it by half. Let's say X is nine cm. Uh, I consider X is nine cm as example. Let's see another alternate is like I can cut it. Let's say I only can cut in one cm or two cm in integer number. Uh. So I can if I cut it about half and it is one is 5 cm one is the 4 cm and 5 cm then i can only earn 19 dollar that is not a smart way extreme is like i cut all 1 cm 1 cm 1 cm 1 cm i can cut to into nine pieces then i then each of them is one dollar so nine cm you only can earn nine dollar yeah then one 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 dollar times nine that also not good so what the problem then this is the problem is like what is the the maximum what is the best uh cut for for you to get gain the maximum 
return maximum revenue so then the the most naive way is like if you have 4 cm you just try 4 cm 1 cm plus 3 cm 1 1 2 1 1 1 1 2 2 2 2 by half yeah all the combination so there are a lot of and very soon you'll find that as your problem size increase the number of permutation also increase yeah so and then you yeah by doing that how do we solve the problem hmm. you can see that you are if you notice here is like 1 cm and 3 cm then this one there's a 1 cm and 2 cm then 2 cm can further cut to 1 cm and 1 cm or do nothing so there are something is overlapping. I don't know whether you can observe it or maybe this pole. I yeah you you can try bigger number. Then you will find that yeah certain sub problem you need to repeatedly consider. Yeah whether you cut it by half or whether you cut it by one three or two two. All these are repeated process. So the most naive approach is like you have four cm. Uh, so you can try one three, you can try two two, you can try three one, you can try four zero. That means you you don't cut. Just simply use the four cm. You also yeah from one three you can further consider there are a few possible. Of course one three is one possible solution. You also can consider that you on this three cm you further cut it to one two two one or you don't cut. Same thing for the 2cm also can be further cut to 1,1 one, one or 2cm you don't cut at all and so on and so forth. Then from this 2cm also same thing you need to you can start find that there's a there's a there's a sub repeated sub problem. This one and this one are repeated sub problem. Yeah. So if you don't do anything, very naive approach, this is a very naive approach, top now approach, that you recursive, that you consider, you cut, that means given x cm, I trying to cut 1 cm from the x cm, or 2 cm, or 3 cm, or 4 cm, then the corresponding price, plus, plus, the subsequent, the remaining part, which is n minus 1, n minus 1 cm which is in this case is 3 cm in this case is 2 cm in this case is 1 cm in this case you already left 0 cm then you further recursively do the same procedure for that 3 c for this 3 cm i can further cut 1 cm 2 cm or 3 cm so i have three tries to further cut it to shorter and then remaining one you still repeatedly recursively 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 solve the problem and then eventually you look for the maximum you look for among all these possible all the return you find the maximum you find which one give you the maximum yeah and this not surprising you look at this graph this particular diagram you should be able to expect that the complexity of this recursive function very similar to the Fibonacci series is 2 power to n is 2 power to n and like I said actually this part and this part you you don't have to do it two times no point you when you encounter that remaining is 2 yeah you 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 already know that it's either one one or two earlier one one what is my table uh? one one is one is one cm is one dollar that's mean you can get two dollar if you don't cut you get five dollar so answer is very clear when you encounter is two cm then you better you don't need to check again two cm the best is don't cut don't do anything you you can gain five dollar if you go and cut it by half you only can earn two dollar so when you go back to this you already you don't have to go through this particular recursive and here you supposed to know that five dollar is the maximum return you can have for two cm same thing here when your encounter is two cm you already know that five dollar is the best you just need to do it once 
one of the sub problem you just do it once you already know the answer is five dollar is the best then subsequently you encounter two cm you don't have to go through it again you know that five dollar is the best if i remember i have some way to remember this answer so i can reuse it so that is the the idea so be, so that this kind of a top-down approach i can try to build a table initially or i don't know at the beginning i don't know yes so i just put them all zero or negative one indicate that i don't know what is the answer for for this length then i call the function to recursively solve it so same thing if it's already n equal to zero the length is zero then nothing can do return zero then if rn the n is not zero and then rn is non is greater than zero then that means you 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 have encountered such length before and you solve it before then you don't have to go through the next step you directly return the answer so otherwise if you really didn't encounter this length before then you need to run this for loop else that's when you need to run this for loop you will try like you have the length is n i said that length is n then i need to try for i equal to one i need to cut one or i equal to 2 cm 3 cm 4 cm 5 cm 6 cm to n cm these are all the possible i can i i, I can do on this particular row then each of them 1 cm 2 cm 3 cm 4 cm just now already provide you the table you know the corresponding price you can gain by that length plus plus the remaining part you 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 further based on the remaining part you recursive call and then that remaining length you will cut accordingly and find out what is the maximum revenue you can gain from that particular length and n minus i the length yeah so you keep doing this after you find out the maximum then that is the answer for n for the length of n then you just update your table and then return repeat this procedure so when you encounter re-encounter the same length you don't need to calculate you just check the r table the r array so the last branch then only choose the maximum so in the end yeah of course you choose the, the your objective is max maximize the revenue of course you you will choose the maximum yeah you will choose the maximum okay hmm. so that is the top now approach another way is you can think the problem in the other way around is i i i you you tell me your length is n or whatever number i i, I always start from the length is start from one then when 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 my length is i equal to one uh i i try to to a bit this one when you bottom up you can think is you trying to fill out the table from from uh i think j here i call I, I start from j i run a loop to try j equal to one what is the maximum when j equal to two is two cm if my 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 the length is two cm then what is the optimum or maximum revenue i can have for two cm what is the uh re maximum revenue i can have when it's three cm four cm five cm six cm seven cm i slowly build up the table when i reach uh to the problem sites and then that is the answer i found the answer then yeah that's a bottom up approach is filling up the table to this one you're not surprising that the time complexity you can see that there's a for loop yeah there's a for loop from j equal to one to n this one is one to j so it's like one plus you expect it's one plus two plus three plus four plus five plus six plus seven and two plus n then the complexity is n square. So the the complexity for bottom up or top down, you will find that they are they are the same. You are try out from bottom up or yeah to fill out this table in short. 
you it will cost you n square compared to earlier naive approach which is exponential you still improve the the this the, the time complexity of this problem so if i have this <clears throat> so you'll find that when you have one cm you if your length is one cm the maximum revenue of course don't you, you also cannot cut further so you only can earn one dollar if it's two cm you have two options it's either you just simply sell the the two cm without cut anything then you earn five dollar another option is you cut it by half one cm plus one cm you only can earn two dollar then in that case the maximum is five dollar so five dollar is the maximum three three is uh, either three plus zero or two plus two or one plus one plus one plus one or two plus one plus one all these combination you will find that uh you know two plus one sorry three cm only two plus one only six dollar two plus one only six dollar i mean it's one plus one plus one only one uh, only three dollar what else two plus one two one plus one plus one no more yeah so all of this then do nothing is the best so you end at eight dollar and so on and so forth so this one should be two cm by two cm two cm plus two cm ten dollar five dollar plus five dollar is the maximum yeah i think this one is two plus three two cm plus three cm give you the best eight dollar plus five dollar thirteen dollar and so on and so forth so from that you can yeah you can use the bottom up approach to solve the problem okay so in short this one is like you you only have one uh one issue you need to optimize your 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 problem is only the price the revenue so you you just need to fill out one one d array one d array an array to fill out the table okay then the next one is a zero one next step yeah now the problem will become harder a little bit that you not only look at the value you also look at the size you have the constraint so in this problem is a net set problem that's when you have n item you have n item you have a net set that the capacity is c then you can put this n item into this next step of course you 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 like very likely that you won't be able to put all of them and each of them each item the size is different the value also they have different value ideally i need what the objective is in this particular problem the objective function is i i need to maximize the value the total value of the item that fits into the next set so my i want to maximize this my here the x is can be either zero or one zero means that you don't take it you don't put the item if it's x i is one means that i take the item so it's the summation of those item you select because it's times one ma. those item you select and put into the next set you will give one then the value will sum it up their value will sum it up i need to maximize it of course ideally it's like if all the value are positive number if all the v are positive number then ideally of course i wish that i, I put all the item but however there's a constraint there's a constraint here which limit you that that is the 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 subject to this constraint your your the size each item there's a size the summation of the size cannot be must be less than or equal to c can be less than that but can, cannot be more than that must be less than or equal to c so you need to try to find the best combination to such that you can put all those item into the next set under this uh, capacity and then the value is maximum the total value of the selected item give you the maximum return so how to solve this problem that's when you can put this one you can put something into it you can put something into it 
Ideally, is I wish to put all of them, but I have the constraint here. If I don't have this constraint, of course, the answer, you don't need to do anything. You just tell me that you just submit out all of them. But unfortunately, you have a, a additional size constraint. So by brute force, is like I try. Lo. You can see, I think I give you, let's say I have three items. Then it's, you try out all the combination. The brute, the brute force is I try. Lo. Don't put anything. The first one is like all zero. That means you don't don't put item one, item two, item three. Then your value is zero. Obviously, you didn't put anything into the next set. Okay. Then you can put uh item three. You can try to put item two. You also can try just put the item one. Then these are the corresponding value. Then if you put all of them, if don't have that constraint uh, the next set uh the capacity. Then of course it's put all of them v1 plus v2 plus v3 will give you the maximum but if you have the yeah your your you have the constraint you because of this constraint yeah this particular constraint you are not a properly you are not able to put all item all three item into the next set then you need to from the rest to find out what is the the, the optimum solution yeah maybe it's v v1 plus v2 maybe it's v1 plus v3 maybe it's v2 plus v3 yeah we need to find out which one so one brute force approach is try out all the combination and then check which one give you the maximum and at the same time you fulfill the constraint but can we do something smarter you can see that you can see that actually when you do this step item 2 and item 3 yeah in this simple small problem you already com calculate two times yeah v2 plus v3 that means if i uh, if i know earlier the the v2 plus if i select v2 and v3 should i select v2 or v v, v v2 v3 when when i encounter the sub problem b only can select v2 and v3 what is the maximum optimum solution i already know i already encounter once so subsequently you encounter you don't have to really go and calculate it you can use the earlier result to make a decision so that is the solution to solve this problem you will find that you yeah this time it's become 2d you you have two two issue you need to so i i i trying to you trying to thinking that i slowly add in introduce more item into this problem and then i slowly increase my capacity from one two three four to c and then i slowly introduce item one item two item three to item n then then every time I make a decision is I I only have two possible become a at that moment I only have two 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 choice. Is the I item should I I I I I choose not to use it. I choose not to use it. Or the I item I choose to use it. It's either I choose to use it or not use it. I select it or not select it. Right? Every time you 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 you, you consider you introduce one new item. Yeah, when you only have one item, when you only have one item, answer is obvious. When you only have one item, you you just whether your capacity. The problem is that whether you use it or not use it is like whether you can put this item one into into, uh, the capacity with one. Then when the capacity is two, can you put the item one? Can you put the item one? Can you put the item one until C? Yeah. So when you could put the item one, of course you should put into it and then get some 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 value. Yeah, but the each item have then when you introduce the item two, then you should consider is like if you choose not to use the item two, then is you will use the result with i minus one. That means without the item two, without the item the i, I without the i item. And then comma the J the capacity because that means the previous one the capacity don't need to bother you use the previous result 
then it will be the same as the current result. Or another possible is I need to include the item two. If I need to include the item I, the I item, maybe item two, item three, the I item, if I need to include the I item, then my value will increase by VI. But here I need to consider, I need to reserve the space. So I need to use the, the maximum return the maximum value in uh without the i the is i minus one then the capacity need to j minus the size of i item so that i can put the i item then after that plus i the value of i item then that among either this one this solution or this solution which one give me the maximum then i that is the solution for that particular position okay for example we try to talk, use four item if i have four item item one is two kg item two is one kg item three is three kg item four is two kg their value corresponding value is twelve dollar ten dollar twenty dollar and fifteen dollar respectively for item one to item four respectively then when you okay let's us consider the first item if only first item then my capacity maximum let's say i only consider the capacity up to five dollar uh, five kg only obviously you cannot put all of them yeah sum it out is already five eight kg you definitely cannot choose all of them so i just consider i only have item one item one only two kg of course if your capacity is one if your capacity is okay. Hey, sorry if your capacity is one then of course you cannot put the item one so the value is zero then when your capacity is two okay i can put the item one no problem then in that case i can put the item one then two kg then i have twelve dollar i can earn twelve dollar subsequently not surprising three four five you 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 of course it's twelve dollar twelve dollar twelve dollar yeah you definitely fulfill no problem then next i start consider item two when i consider the item two so when your capacity is one not surprising that whether you choose um you definitely cannot put you cannot add in this one then this one will give you the negative number then this one you will use the previous one i minus they say you cannot put the item two then you will use the previous result this one the i minus one i minus one j which is this one to as an answer because you definitely cannot 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 include the item two when your capacity only one so in that case eh? do i put oh sorry one oh sorry sorry sorry, sorry. one kg uh. this one is one kg then I can choose, I can choose to, sorry, this one, when, when, when my capacity is one, I, I can put in, I can put the item two, I can put the item two, that means I can put the item two, then when the previous result is zero, but if it's, I put the item two, I can put the item two, that means this one will give me $10, then this one, I minus one J is negative, which is zero. If it's the negative value, if if this one gives me negative value, that's mean the previous one is not, not possible, you can put anything earlier, then this one will return zero. So it's zero plus ten. So which is ten dollar. Then when you go to this one, when you your is two kg, if it's two kg, then that's mean if I choose not including item two, the previous result is twelve dollar. Then if I include the item two if i include the item two then i can get ten dollar plus remaining space is not enough to put the item one of course then you will get ten dollar only so it's either twelve dollar or ten dollar answer is obvious you will put the item one which is which will give you twelve dollar so you can try to fill out this table in this way so the next one is three kg 3 kg i can put item one and item two or just put the item one in in that case obviously you will choose to put item one and item two which will give you 22 dollar 
then subsequent of course i will put 22 dollar 22 dollar when the capacity is four or five of course it's 12 dollar plus 10 dollar of course it's 12 dollar earlier result plus one kg for item two previous result is 12 uh four kg four you you uh your e equal to four put for item one then you remaining one kg is sufficient for item two ten ten dollar so twelve dollar plus ten dollar twenty two dollar then you can go to item three item the third item then the third item is three kg then three kg starting you you will just simply reuse this one definitely ten dollar only this one only can be twelve dollar only i don't need to calculate then this one when you three kg three kg if you don't include the the third item you you, you only use the three kg cap three kg capacity to put the item one and item two you can get 22 dollar but then but if you put the item three then you only can get 20 dollar so 20 dollar or 22 dollar maximum of course 22 dollar is better yeah so then the next one for uh, when the item is four then you can consider is you you if you put three kg into it the item three is three kg which is twenty dollar plus the result for capacities but four four must see go to four so you still have cap is one capacity so the best one is ten dollar so this one will be thirty dollar thirty dollar give you the best or you choose not to including the the item three is twenty two dollar better or thirty dollar is better thirty dollar is better so next one will be five kg will be twelve dollar plus twenty dollar which is thirty two dollar so it's it's thirty two or twenty two yeah so you have two choice is you including if you including uh item three if you're including item three which you can gain twenty dollar then the remaining capacity is only two kg so you look at the two kg capacity without item three which give you twelve dollar so it's twelve dollar plus twenty dollar which is thirty two dollar that is what this deck trying to do maybe i have to clear yeah this is what you can see from here this number is come from the first term is the i item the item three is not used is unused when it's unused then the answer is 22 dollar then another one another possible is you choose item three if you choose item three you can get 20 dollar plus plus this you need to read capacity is five capacity is five then three kg so you only left two kg right? so you only left two kg the best for two kg without i i item without i item without the i item is twelve dollar that is the best you earlier already encounter you already solve it you don't need to solve you just look back the the table you can fill up which is twelve dollar plus twenty dollar so this part this part will return you 32 and then this one will give you 22 so which one maximum 22 and 32 maximum is 32 that's why this one is 32 so you carry on the rest i think i don't need to explain again the rest is 10 15 25 30 in the end when you have your capacity is uh your capacity is 5 kg and then these are the item and this item uh the best uh combination they can return is 37 dollar 37 dollar again what i mean earlier that they are they can have multiple solution means that the combination may be more than one solution more than one combination can give you 37 dollar but the thing is the problem is the optimum we only interest is the the total is 37 dollar we don't from here they don't really tell you that in the end this 37 dollar is is you select which item i only tell you it's 37 dollar the maximum is 37 dollar yeah 
So you 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 if you want to find out the path, then 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 you need to further yeah further modify the algorithm because this formula you can see that they only return the value only, return the price only. So you may not know which one is selected, which item is selected. So that is the, using the dynamic programming approach to solve this zero one net set problem. It's a very classic problem in computer science one of the very classic uh, computer science problem so you expect you have a n by c metric you need to fill up and then for all the possible sites from one to c then if you use the i'm using a bottom up approach so to fill out this table is n times c because the size is n times c yeah so the c can be very large if the c very large this problem is still not very cheap by by using the dynamic programming yeah you soft using the if the i is not select if the i item is not selected and and the i item is selected yeah to find out which one is better yeah. so that is the dynamic programming maybe i can answer some okay i think yeah maybe this Coming Wednesday, I can I can talk about the matching problem. So let's see a uh, sub. So the sub problem are linked together. So you find that yes, you can find that a lot of in in this particular question, you a lot yeah the sub problem are overlapping. When you select or not select, select or not select the item, then you need to back backward search the the sub problem with the smaller capacity and then that is the uh, repeated uh. so earlier the the another problem the the road cutting one also similar road cutting one you also cut you can see that the road cutting you can see that actually there are two two sub problem actually is is exactly the same thing so you're not necessarily recursively call it again yeah then what is the next one the city population backtrack when you reach the city that have a greater than w or continue no you find the path first okay that is the assignment problem huh? that is like finding the you you find the path from 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 u to u to v u to v city u to v or v to u then you after you find the path you determine you determine that which among these city which one which one is greater uh which one is lesser or equal to w which one is not you just count the number of city the return is the number of city total number of city which they are uh the that have population greater than w uh uh, uh no so at most w the last branch then only choose the maximum yeah yeah you 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 recursive it's a recursive function and then when you return then you decide which one give you the maximum then you that is your your answer for that function call in that particular recursive call so maximum got it okay maximum got it okay so i think no other question okay so that is the, the dynamic programming for today then i think probably wednesday i will talk about the matching problem because that one i think need to take some time to, to yeah the algorithm is more complex than this but this one i think you can think about it is in your daily life actually quite a, a lot of problem having that kind of a characteristic that certain sub problem you are repeatedly calculate repeatedly calculate when you find you have that problem that kind of a situation you can consider to use maybe can i, I cannot say 100 percent, but maybe you can use dynamic programming to resolve it yeah well you you can think about it i'm yeah i i i i i i i i i only can tell you that the adjacency metric for sure is very obvious cannot 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 use yeah very obvious cannot use the rest, I, I, I just, yeah, let you try. 
to think about it whether whether there's any better solution or not yeah you can try other than i tell you if i tell you the answer then 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 that become pointless already the purpose is ask you to what you need all this like programming is not people tell you that one solution you able to re-implement what you need to be able is you need to able to solve the problem by your own so so it's trying to practice again and again if like i said if no student can do it then fine i will moderate the result don't worry i will moderate to 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 to, to give you to, to 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 yeah but i think i believe that I, I'm not not I believe that I, I already see that quite a number of students can handle at least the small problem the small problem side they they all can most of the people so far I see all can handle yeah just like when the problem sites become so big then the compute the, there's a time limit there's a memory limit then you cannot anyhow solve it then that is what those people are struggling now I left for you to try. Like I said, if majority, I think maybe not one or two students can solve it, then I will I, I wouldn't moderate. If majority student in by the end of the de at the deadline you cannot solve it, then fine, I will moderate the result accordingly. That's in though that test case I wouldn't count it. Okay. If no other further question, I will stop today lecture. Thank you for your attending.